Okay, welcome everyone to this Electrifying Bradfield webinar. And first of all, we're going to put on our slides that we have prepared tonight to make it an interesting evening. And I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting on the land of the Daramaragal and the Darug people on whose land I meet, and I welcome and to all wherever you may be. Tonight we're talking about electrifying Bradfield, and I'd like to be tell you that it's very exciting. We now have our new website, electrifyingbradfield.org. This is really important because what we've been doing, if some have noticed, is that in the transition. Um, I have used my website that I used in the federal election. And that's not relevant because this is a non-political, bipartisan um, organisation that we're going to set up. So we're really doing well by getting our electrifyingbradfield.org website up. Now, look. We always begin by talking about the seriousness of climate change, and it's very, very dire, it's very, very serious, and it's incredibly confronting because we know that the United Nations are making reports and telling us if we, we are still on track to go beyond the 1.5 degrees Celsius, and that is absolutely catastrophic for our environment and for humans and our wildlife. So it's a really serious situation. We're going to show this short slide so that it says what really the situation is. So, so we, oh, sorry. So we're showing that video now? Yes. Janine? Yes. Showing that video. Okay, right up. Okay, so I just have to do this then. Their devastating death and ruin across two states. And the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says it's going to get worse. Climate change isn't lurking around the corner waiting to pounce. It's already upon us, raining down blows on billions of people. Today's IPCC report is an atlas of human suffering and a damning indictment of failed climate leadership. The report lays out not just the devastation in store for the world, but also what we can avoid. With high emissions, Australia could see 600 additional deaths per year from extreme heat. But with low emissions, that could be halved. Our GDP could drop 6% by 2070 if the world warms by 3 degrees. But GDP could go up 2.6% with just 1.5 degrees. But some systems, like the Great Barrier Reef and Alpine forests, are likely heading towards collapse no matter what. Climate change has the potential to fundamentally change the face of the world. Heavy rainfall like that causing flooding this week is set to intensify. Climate change is now embedded in all extreme weather events. A warmer atmosphere can hold more water. That means that when it does rain, we can see much more intense rainfall events like what we're seeing now. Essentially, the future is ours to choose. We can go on a high emissions path and suffer the consequences, or go on a low emissions path and benefit from effective and proactive action. But the window of time to take that action is rapidly running out. Michael Slezak, ABC News. And I, and I just want to make that Cathy, who's with us and just talked about her uh, property at Cowra, uh, is under flood in, a, in an unprecedented way. So our climate emergency is really real. It's happening daily and we have to do something about it. And that's why we're trying to do this project, Electrifying Bradfield. But there's good news. For example, rooftop solar is really trumping all fossil fuels as renewables just smash the records on the main grid. So we've got incredibly positive opportunity, but we have to work as fast and we have to work on all levels of it, from government to community and really that's where electrifying Bradfield is. 
So I'd like to now welcome our guest speaker tonight. And this is Wal Knowles. And Wal is a local identity of the Bradfield electorate and has lived most of his life here. And he has received awards from the Lions Club for his service to the environment. He's received Karingai Council as Senior Citizen of the Year. He's been a great advocate for the Climate Council, collecting and raising over $2,000 by a very simple act of just collecting the 10 cent recycle can or bottle. So that's a massive effort. And originally I was going to have another guest speaker, which I, but that was, they were unavailable. And at the very last moment, I called him Wall because I know something about him that he's going to share with us. He's doing it. He's putting solar on his roof in Kalara, and that's what we're going to hear about it. So I'd like to welcome Wal Noll to now talk about the practical reality of putting solar on one's roof. Wal, you didn't give me permission to unmute you, so you'll have to unmute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. People have to give permission for a host to unmute them because apparently one time during a Zoom session, the host unmuted the man and he was heard by his, and his wife heard him talking to his girlfriend on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he threatened to sue Zoom. So now you have to have permission. There we are. Go for, go for it, Wal. So you've got me unmuted? Yep, you're right. You, you did it yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks very much. Um, the first slide, if you wouldn't mind, Wayne, just showing my house. Well, actually, the first slide is showing your awards that we forgot. To <laughs> oh, well, thanks. <laughs> uh, I'm grateful for the Lions Club and uh, Karingai Council. Uh, I, I'm just an average citizen. I don't think I uh, deserve it. Uh, next one. Okay. So this is my place at East Kalara. Uh, the house was built 1959, uh, double brick house. Uh, it's got very wide eaves, which is great. Uh, uh, it, and big windows so that we get good winter sun and the wide eaves keep the uh, uh, sun out uh, during summertime. Right, uh, next slide. Now, they're the panels that we installed in uh, 2011. There were eight panels. They generated 1.5 kilowatts. Now, uh, I'd always said to myself, I've got to update them because with later technology, uh, you can get far better... Uh, uh, performance. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what what happened about uh, three or four months ago was I got a bill uh, to say I hadn't got any money for the solar I produced. And uh, after sort of looking around the place, I found that the inverter had failed. So it meant that with a failed inverter, I couldn't uh, convert the uh, solar energy into electricity. Now, I, I've uh, decided to uh, replace them. And about six, seven weeks ago, I decided on a firm. Uh, I, I, I logged on to www.choicesolar and they gave me about uh, six or seven firms to choose from. And these firms all quoted, gave a initial quote, and I decided on three. And then I took up with those three uh, who I would uh, choose to do the job. Now, they should have... The firm I selected should have put, uh, hang on, I'll go back a little bit. Uh, where you can see those 
eight panels. Uh, the new panels uh, will, will be um, 13 in that spot. And if there's another slide, uh, we'd have another three on the other side of the roof. And those uh, three over that side uh, will get shaded in the winter time. Is that it or? Uh, perhaps we better come back to where we were. Yeah, that one. Now, <clears throat> the uh, three that are on that other side have micro inverters on them and they cost another $110 each so that the um, shade will once uh, in winter time and the tree next door shades at, it would cut out generation of electricity from all the panels. But having those three isolated uh, means that the other 13 will still generate the electricity. And those 16 in total will give me 6.6 .6 kilowatt. Um, going back to the original that you can see in front of you, the 1.5 kilowatt, um, they cost me $3,400 back in 2011. For about a year, I got 26 cents. Uh, That's with government, state government subsidy. Then it dropped down after that to 20 cents for about five years. And then it dropped down to 11 cents for another two or three years. And it's now down to five cents. And over that time, uh, I've calculated that uh, having generated electricity, it's uh, $3,300. So that's $100 less than my initial outlay. So that's sort of the old system. And coming to the new system, I was... I. Uh, it might be worthwhile, Wayne, going to the slide that shows the inverter. Now, that's the inverter. There was a 10-year guarantee on that. It lasted me 11 years. Um, we might switch to the next one, which shows the meter box. That's just adjacent. And on the left-hand side, you can see the gross meter. And that gross meter was installed, say, uh, two or three years ago. And that was the first time I was able to use my own uh, solar panels uh, for to give me electricity during daylight hours. Um, and from that, it would drive my refrigerator, my computer, and the washing machine. Okay. We might go to the next one, Wayne. Or yeah, um, just in general about the new system that uh, I've uh, paid fifty percent for. Um, it was due to go in last Friday, but because of the wet weather, they've delayed it another couple of weeks. So. I'm hoping to get my new system going in on the 11th of November. And just by coincidence, uh, I had a ring from a battery company. Uh, they'd uh, put a note in my letterbox um, and said they could supply me a battery for about $3,400. And uh, they only rang me back today. I'd been in touch with them on the 19th of uh, October. But uh, they said that uh, that would only give me 
2.9 kilowatts uh, of storage. Now, my average bill, uh, not during, not not when I have the solar panels, but the average bill for a quarter is uh, $250. And that equates to use of about 11 kilowatts per day. So I, I just sort of made a mental arithmetic that if my 1.5 kilowatt uh, system, when it was working, produced 4.4 on average kilowatts, and that's in winter time, a 6.6 .6 should produce 19 kilowatts. Now, 19 is far more than uh, what I need, I, I need on average in winter about 11 kilowatts. And it's a question of knowing how much you would need uh, at night time as opposed to daytime. And that's where your battery is uh, needed. Anyway, the, the firm that... Uh, rang me solar battery group they were offering a 2.9 kilowatt for three thousand nine hundred dollars but they assured me that that wouldn't be enough for my nighttime use so they've uh, said that it would be better to get a five kilowatt battery and that would be $7,400. So I can't really uh, give you a practical experience. This is still uh, awaiting my evaluation as to what's needed in the battery field. But I can say with uh, solar, um, it, it, it's uh, certainly uh, the way to go in terms of uh, contributing to lowering the emissions from uh, coal or gas-fired power stations, having solar on your roof. And... Uh, uh, you know, I, I just feel uh, that um, you, you can, if you like, um, when you get these quotes, I'll give you the rundown on uh, the payback period on, on the outpay of your funds. So I guess, uh, Janine, that, that's uh, more or less uh, my, my talk, um, I'm open to questions and... Uh... All right, well, thank you so much, Wal. And I think that's really wonderful that your talk because it's about someone who has actually done it and for I haven't done it. So I think, you know, it's been very inspiring, your talk. So I was wondering if we had some questions. I think Jill has a hand up. Is, is that you, Jill? Jill W, no. Anybody else got a, a question? Uh, David? You're turning your mute. Sorry, I'm out of Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Thanks, Wal, so much for that presentation. Um, just first of all, I want to just offer you a little bit of information that we might be able to help in terms of the battery that there is someone who I met yesterday uh, who I think would be very useful to talk with as well about uh, batteries. Um, all I can tell you is that in terms of what he was saying about a battery for a 6.5 system, he would be able to deliver something to you, I think, 
much more cheaply than um, what it was that you were quoted by that company. So we'll stay in touch and I will give you his contact. But the question I had was, were you able to get any sort of government subsidy to do your installation of your solar panels? Right, thanks, David. That was something I forgot to mention. Um, definitely, when you get the estimate from the installers for the solar panels, they uh, have calculated their government subsidy into your quote. So they take it away from the total cost. And uh, I think if I can see a, one of the quotes, um, I could sort of give you a rough idea of that figure. Uh, it certainly, um, I would estimate as about a third of the cost. Right. Um, I've got it here. This this quote I had uh, was in total uh, eight thousand seven hundred, and the government subsidy for that was three thousand right. dollars. So, in, in by subtracting that figure. Uh, it came to $5,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think that's important so that people know that, um, that the subsidy actually is taken into account when you actually get your quote and the price for the job. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Good. Good. Wally, do you talk, um, tell us about other neighbours? that also are doing solar and any conversations that you have and sharing of knowledge in your local neighbourhood? Yes. Uh, two doors away from me uh, is a two-storey house and it has no trees that sort of shade it. And three sides of that uh, roof have solar panels. Uh, I'm fortunate that mine face northeast, uh, and that's the rear of the house. Um, and this neighbour uh, would have it on the uh, north, uh, the the or, the or the east, the north, and the west side. And uh, they, they installed them when they were only getting five cents. Um, but uh, I, I think they've uh, been very happy with uh, having them there. And the, uh, the, um, the, the, the saving on their electricity bill and the, the way things are shaping up today, I mean, they're, they're telling us that um, lo looking to the future in terms of market costs, it could be up near the $230 uh, compared to today's purchase of the same uh, kilowatts is, is $70 or $80. So, I mean, solar certainly will come into its own if those things uh, happen. I, I think the press was just saying today that it's not only gas, it's it, it's coal is the other thing that's uh, becoming so expensive and, and pushing the uh, electricity bills up. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Wal. Good. Right. Other questions that people might have? Yes, Bill. Hang on. Hang on. I'll unmute you, Bill. Okay, you're, you're unmuted now. Go for it. No, I still can't hear you, Bill. You're, no, you're unmuted. It's not the mute. You must have something at your end, I'm afraid. No. Can you hear me? Somebody yes. give me a up if now you we can. can. Yes. I can hear you now, Bill. Um, 
So I was reading a choice report on battery and battery technologies. And uh, they're basically as uh, recently as August, I think they were saying the um, batteries uh, don't yet make full economic sense for most out, uh, households. So we expect that to change uh, within the next decade. So that's one of the things I'm sort of struggling with. Um, I really probably need to use a, a, to have a battery, but it doesn't look like it's it, it's a problem free area. So I wonder if anybody's got any comments on that. Uh, uh, Peter, yeah. you've got your hand up. Did you want to reply? Hello, well, Peter uh, from Queensland. Uh, Bill, the um, um, recent uh, budget uh, announced that we were going to see a 56% increase in the price of electricity uh, within the, uh, the next 12 months. Um, if the government doesn't manage to sort out uh, the um, coal-fired power stations and the, the cost of gas, um, I think the, uh, the short article is fairly conservative in its um, cost estimates. Uh, and you could well see um, the um, payback period for a battery drop back to somewhere between two and five years. Mm. Yeah. The other... Um, My question is about the, um, the the issue of reliability because the choice report says that, that um, quite a few people have problems with the batteries. So I understand the issue about electricity pricing. This is not a question about electricity pricing. The issue is, um, is investment in a battery a sound yeah. investment given yeah. the state of the technology? Does anybody have any comments? Sorry, Bill, I um, misinterpreted um, your question there. Um, the life of a battery is somewhere between five and 10 years. Um, even with solar panels, um, they degrade by about 2% per year um, from uh, when they're installed. Um, I've had solar panels on since 2009. I'm still generating um, more than um, excess uh, capacity. In Queensland, you can only export the excess after what your house has consumed. Um, so I'm, I'm still exporting um, in a quarter something like about um, uh, nine, 90 to 100 kilowatt hours. Um, I'm fortunate in that I went early in 2009 and signed up to a scheme that guarantees me 50, 50 cents uh, for every kilowatt hour exported. Uh, and that lasts until uh, 2028. So I'm in no immediate hurry to change over to um, batteries, although I am looking at putting in a second system uh, and hooking that up to a battery system and then islanding the house from the uh, electricity grid. Janine? Um, yes, Dave, I'm just going to... Uh, Bill, again, the person who I met yesterday um, may be very useful to you to talk through some of those issues. All, his comment was that there is very significant development happening very rapidly. And so it would be good to talk about the problems that choice raises and how those problems are maybe being overcome. I mean, you know, the point is that the cheapest electricity that we're going to be able to buy in the near future and in the long term future is solar energy generated on your home, stored in your home and used in your home. And the estimates of everybody that I've talked with, that will cost us about six cents a kilowatt. Lord, I understand the arguments, all right? I don't need to be convinced of the arguments. My questions are practical questions related to actual implementation. Uh, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Bill, what we'll do is... Sort of a good uh, idea, I... but we're two people living in a house. 
uh, and I know what our annual consumption is, so I can put the numbers into the, the calculators and what have you. Uh, and uh, it's like we really need battery, but the battery stuff doesn't look like, um, sorry, putting a battery doubles the price of the system, basically, yep. for what we want to do. If we want a 6.6 kilowatt system, which is probably yep. what we need, we want yep. to add a 6.6 .6 kilowatt battery to it. It pretty much doubles the price. That's exactly the right. System, yep. And then that affects the um, uh, the return, how long it takes to pay itself off, yeah. and all of those yeah. sorts of things. Can I just so say that? I'm, can I just say I'm that? Cool um, with the basic things, but I'm reading that a lot of people have problems with the batteries. Now it's not like they're terribly out of pocket, but they have to get the batteries replaced or they have this sort of problem or have that sort of problem. It's not so much outright failures. It's the actual operational maintenance uh, aspects of the thing which are concerning me at the moment. So my question is very specifically about that, not the general arguments about why we should have solar. Thank you. Yeah. Yep, so I understand I, that. Let's, let's have make... Wayne first and then Peter. Yeah, look, I just wanted to make, make two comments. One that um, uh, I've had a battery now for, I don't know, five or six years and uh, had no problems at all with it. Um, I'm not sure that it's necessarily paid for itself. And to be honest, I haven't done that calculation. And I guess if you're lucky enough to be in a position where you're really, really not flat out and having to make sure that it's going to actually you end up saving you money, um, then you can consider, well, may not be end up saving you money because by the time, you know, the cost of the battery and its lifetime and all that, but it is saving the environment, you know. So if uh, even if it's still not economically viable to have a battery or you're not going to actually end up saving money on it, um, it's still it's still obviously good for the environment because you're using less of the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe just to address that through community batteries and other things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. A good point. House, yeah. Um, may not be the smartest thing that we could... Well, I think well, we need to go down all right, Peter, you had the comment. Janine, um, one of the things to remember with batteries is that uh, over the last uh, few okay. years, um, the battery technology has come forward in leaps and bounds. So while Wayne's had a good experience, um, five years or more, um, the, um, there are some cheap and nasty battery systems uh, coming out of countries to the... Um, northwest of us um, that I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. Um, the, the other thing is that it's not just your, uh, when you're looking at your power requirements, it's just not the um, uh, linear uh, sum of the amount of power you use. It's You've actually got to have sufficient supply there to meet your maximum demand. Now, in the summer months here in Queensland, uh, during the day, my maximum demand can be anything up to um, uh, 25 kilowatts. So I've got to have a system that generates for me uh, that amount of power to meet the peak. And this is maybe where you're having you're hearing stories about batteries not working properly is that uh, people simply exceed uh, the um, ability of the battery to deliver. Wally, do you want to say anything? Because you're wrestling with your issue about batteries as well. Yes. Um, Cass did type up a comment. Uh, did you catch that earlier uh, in her chat? Uh, but, but anyway, coming back uh, to, to the batteries, uh, my brother at uh, Longville has had a battery um, and he's found it is a little bit too small mm. um, and he's trying to, uh, uh, if he can, increase its uh, capacity. But uh, they, they, uh, there were two people in, in the house and, and they're, they're run fairly well in terms of not having to use very much power from uh, um, from the um, power stations. 
have been able to supply their own electricity most of the time. So I guess that's uh, the only experience I've had with batteries. Yeah, yeah. But I agree with you, Peter. You do have to get a ba battery that uh, meets your needs and uh, making sure that uh, for all the electricity that you consume, that uh, at least the storage is there. And I mean, we've been through periods of very wet days when, you know, possibly there's been hardly any charge going into those batteries. So that's the other factor. Well, you've hit on a very good point there. Um, we've been experiencing um, a series of very cloudy and often very wet days here in Queensland. Um, th there have been, um, well, last month, for instance, uh, was a classic case where we went um, three weeks and all I was generating on average per day was around about um, uh, 1.2 kilowatts. So <laughs> I was going to be running, uh, if I didn't have main supply, I was going to be running very short. Yes, yes, that's right. All that's right. right. Um, any other comments or questions? Then we'll move on. We'll be giving anybody another opportunity. So right. I yep. think what's really interesting is that we are talking about batteries and maybe that's oh, something sorry. that we can do next year is to get someone with the um, to talk about batteries. So that would be a really good um, direction from after this discussion tonight. Uh, which was about feed-in tariffs and, and um, you know, what's the current state of play? I know it used to be We can't we've, lost your, we've lost your audio, Bill. Okay. The complexity of feed-in tra tariffs as well, so that's something we can uh, address because basically we're doing our monthly Zooms and we're looking for speakers to give us this information. So let's work on that. So I'd like to just finish and say thank you to Wally. And I'd just like to say I really do hope that you will become a net zero champion for Green Guy Council. And it might, and be prepared to um, uh, keep us informed about the update of your solar panels. And maybe we might even organize a visit there and have a look at them um, to see how they're going. So that's something we can really look forward to. <laughs> so let's give Waldolf a clap and thank you for your inspiring talk about the practicalities of just putting solar and a battery uh, to generate your own electricity. Thanks, Julie. Thank you, Walt. Now we're going on to look at our next slides. Um, and just finishing, this was the uh, slide that while we're talking about where he got a quote from, Solar Choice. So one of the things that we've been doing with Electrifying Bradfield is that we've established a steering committee and we've been having regular meetings, face-to-face -face meetings, where a small group of us has been getting together and talking about how to keep um, working on our plan to electrify Bradfield with renewables by the end of the decade or earlier. So we are having a meeting on Monday, the 14th of November. And if anyone here is really interested in joining that meeting, you're welcome. And I just ask that you give David Smith, who just dropped off at the moment, I had to leave the meeting, a telephone call, and uh, you're very welcome to join us because one of the things we have to do is we have to establish an incorporated body. We have to think about how um, to get membership and, and how to continue our work. And uh, particularly with the council, our three local councils in Bradfield, Hornsby, Karingai and Willoughby. And as I've said in other webinars, uh, there is there will be another talk on 
solar panels, and that will be on Tuesday, the 15th of November. That's next week. And that's from Hornsby Shire Council. So that would be really useful, Bill, perhaps for you to watch um, and ask about those questions about the battery. So that will be another perspective and that should be very useful. What's happening with uh, oh, that, that was, uh, that was, yeah. and Karingai Council is actually having a talk um, about a book, Joel Gurgis, Humanity's Moment, a client, climate scientist case for hope. And that's on the 23rd of November. And if any, if those who attended our uh, electrifying Bradfield concert on the 14th of October, David Smith, who just had to leave us, gave a very impassioned speech about um, the book and about just how serious and dire the situation is with climate scientists really, really deeply concerned that we are really so close to tipping points or, and we are now, our actions are creating this very unstable climate system that has been predicted for many, many years. So that would be something that would be very interesting to watch and uh, very relevant and very, you know, sobering to hear that talk from Joel Gerges. The other thing that Karingai Council has been um, talking, particularly as David Smith has been attending their net zero emissions talk, is to get a coalition of climate action groups in Karingai together so that we can not just work in isolation, but we can work across with different groups doing different things and we can come together. So that meeting is planned for the 29th or 30th of November. And I will be providing more news about that as soon as we, um, we know the exact date. <coughs> so our next webinar, which is essentially our Zoom meetings on the first Tuesday of the month, we've got a guest speaker from Electrify 2515. Now, 2515 is the postcode for Ostermere um, down on the, near Wollongong. And that's where a community is doing very similar things that we're trying to achieve. And the, the, the guest speaker, Kristen, will be coming and talking on Tuesday, the 6th of December. So if you could put that in your diary. And now I've gone to their website and there's a short video because also there lives Saul um, Griffith, who is the sort of the, the thinker behind how communities can get to net zero by electrifying everything. So let's just watch that short video. The race is on to create Australia's first electric suburb. Soon, households in the 2515 could have the opportunity to join a generously subsidised program. Why? Because the world is moving to clean energy? To speed up this transition, we want to show it working in a real community. The idea is to get about 500 households to go all electric in six ways. We need to electrify a car, we need to electrify your cooking, electrify the water heater, electrify the heating, and of course, use rooftop solar and a battery to make it all work out. If you'd like to join me and your other neighbours in this world's first pilot, please fill out the survey at the end of this message. Together, we can build Australia's and the world's first all-electric, zero-emission community. So the sound for that wasn't very terribly good, but you can get the gist of it that they're trying to do a similar thing by electrifying a suburb and they want to be the first suburb in Australia. So uh, it would be really good to hear what they're, how they're going to do it so that we can sort of get cross-pollination between electrifying Bradfield and Electrify 2515.
And now I'd like to say thank you to the many people who gave enormous support for our Electrifying Bradfield concert that we held on the 14th of October. And I'd very much like to thank you. We raised $1,400. And that is now our seed money to go to the next step of when we get our incorporated body that we can use that money to get established and start membership and really start a really big program, particularly next year. So it was a really wonderful event. It was very fun. It was very wonderful. Thank you to Wayne who had and his ensemble of musicians loosely woven who provided really uplifting and entertaining music and really inspired us uh, to really come together as a community and work on this project. As well, we had people donating raffle tickets. Thank you, Alison, for your um, wonderful print, Margaret Preston print that was reused and Carolyn Darby donated it. And we had um, Seville Marmalade and Gingerbread Houses, plus all the wonderful people who brought a plate of uh, for supper, which was incredibly delicious. So thank you very much, and thank you for coming. So now I'm just going to say hand it over to um, Wayne because um, he has going to talk about the next um, concerts by Loosely Woven, who I'm sure we would love to support. Well, uh, okay, the um, that. Yeah, our next concert is we're calling it Christmas Tide because it's actually pretty well all Christmassy sort of music. But you aren't going to, you're not going to get here. Hark the herald angels, you know, the sort of stuff you'll hear at the uh, at your local. Um, not there's anything wrong with that, but uh, this is something a little bit different. I was um, in the Renaissance Players at the early music group at Sydney University for um, for ten years in the nineteen seventies, and Winsome Evans, the woman who runs that, did some beautiful mm -hmm. arrangements of Christmas carols and Christmas music, and we've adapted some of those for Lucy Woven and um, and some other really beautiful things, as well as some really fun and silly things too. So, um, if you did, if you're one of the many people that did come to South Taramara on the fourteenth of October, uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this concert as well. It's on at South Taramara on the twenty seventh of this month. Blimey, it's very close, isn't it? Anyway, as well as a number of other, other places, as you can see there on that poster. Um, if you send me an email, you can go on the mailing list so that you hear about all of these things. But uh, we're going to finish now with, um, uh, at that concert we did it on the 14th of October, David um, uh, sang a song. He'd written his own words to, um, you've got the whole world in your hands. And uh, uh, unfortunately, none of us, no, it didn't occur to anyone to actually video it and film it. We should have done that because he had the whole, the whole house, uh, the whole all the audience all bell singing along with him and that. But anyway, what happened this afternoon, David, um, uh, David recorded the, the song and so I'm going to play that now together with a few photos, um, just some pretty rough photos that some members of the audience took of the concert. So it'll give you some of idea, those who didn't come, um, what the concert was like and you can hear David uh, singing his song that he put. So here we go now. Uh, This song uh, was inspired by me reading Yol Gerges' latest book. It's called Humanity's Moment. Uh, and in it, she really has one main message, and that is that the world is in our hands now, that the natural systems of the earth uh, have been put out of balance and they're trying to adjust to what it is that we're now doing and the damage we're causing. You'll notice that it's not my tune. You will all know the tune, um, but it's the words that I think are more important. We got the whole world in our hands. We've got a sky ocean in our hands. We've got our Earth's future. In our hands, we've got the whole wide world in our hands. Oh, well, it's you and me, brother. It's in our hands. It's you and me, sister. It's in our hands. It's you and me, children. It's in our hands. Us future's in our hands. We got the whole world 
In our hands we got a sky ocean In our hands we got Earth's future In our hands we got the whole wide world in our hands Well once Mother Earth looked after herself Her systems in balance maintained her health But along came humans burnt coal, gas and oil Now it's lost to balance its soul We got the whole world in our hands we've got a sky ocean In our hands we've got our Earth future In our hands we've got the whole wide world in our hands Well, permafrost is melting, the sheets in retreat Oceans now warming, soon flooding our streets Old carbon methane released to the sky Stop burning, if we don't we'll die We got the whole world in our hands we've got a sky ocean In our hands we've got Earth's future In our hands we've got the whole wide world in we hands But it's not too late, we can heal Earth and sky We can restore our oceans, Earth if we try Stop burning our Earth, stop destroying our land Save country, it's all in our hands We got the whole world in our hand we've got the whole wide world In our hand we've got a future In our hand we've got the whole wide world In our hand we got the whole world In our hand we've got the whole wide world In our hand we've got a future In our hand we've got the whole wide world In our hand we got the whole wide world In our hand Thank you everyone and good night and see you next time. <laughs> Thanks, Jerome. Thanks, Wal. Thank Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, Peter right. from Queensland. Okay. Thanks, Catherine from Lithgow. Thanks, Beverly from Kalara. Thanks, Janet. I'm glad you could see you here, Janet. Thanks, Jane. Good to see you. I hope your back's going well. And thanks, Thank you, uh, Ken, all. for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, Carmel. Thank all you. All the supporters, Carmel. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.